Live motion graphics. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another My Motion Graphics tutorial. Yeah. My name is Gustav Maia, and today we're gonna talk about how to render uh, multiple cameras inside Cinema 4D. Now, we must thank this friend over here. So, where is he? There he is. So, I had this comment. Uh, you made my day, I just can't ask for better. And this is related to this, uh, how to use Motion Drop. And if you don't know what Motion Drop is, it's basically a free Cinema 4D plugin that you can download at mymotiongraphics.tv. Um, I'll leave the link once again in the description, but let's go on. Uh, you made my day, thank you very much. I just can't ask for better. Well, thank you very much, very kind of you. Uh, one help question, would you please make a tutorial on how to render multiple animated cameras in Cinema 4D without the need to render each camera separately and merge the videos later in After Effects? How can I do that all in Cinema 4D? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So thank you, uh, Riot Yahya Albana, I sure hope I spelled your name correctly. Uh, thanks a lot, and yeah, that's what we're, what we're, we're going to talk about today. So let's take a look at an example first, and then we'll uh, actually run into uh, the details. So let's see. So we have a test scene over here, just simple thing, made straight from Cinema 4D. It didn't uh, go through After Effects, so this is a render straight from Cinema 4D. And I usually don't make QuickTime movies from Cinema 4D, but today I decided to do it just for the sake of this tutorial. And, uh, you know, just because also the point is not to go through the After Effects. So there you go. So the thing here is that we have uh, three cameras, right? We have three objects. We have the one, the two, and the three, right? And we have three cameras. So the first one uh, shots from here. It has a, a slight movement. And the second one, same thing. The movement is slightly different. And the third, here it is, shooting the three and popping uh, out like that. So uh, let's stop with the chip chat and let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. I'm using R16, yeah, and um, I already have my scene set up for this tutorial, so I have the one, the two, and the three, and I want to shoot this with three different uh, shotguns. Uh, just kidding, <laughs> three different cameras, all right. Um, and I also have, by the way, I have the Illuminati here. Again, a free tool that you can download it at mymotiongraphics.tv. And by the way, don't forget to leave a small donation. I would really be thankful if you did. Um, and uh, I also have a background so that it looks a little bit, you know, like, uh, like so. Uh, nothing too fancy, but, you know, the Illuminati just gives it this kind of shading and it looks pretty good. Although we only have a white material and a pretty basic setup. But that's not the point right now. I'm honestly not trying to make something that really looks that interesting. Um, just something that doesn't uh, hurts your eyes when you look at it. So this is what we have. So we have our light and scene. That doesn't really matter right now. And we have our text. So our objects. What we're going to create right now is a target camera. And you can do this with uh, every single camera, all of them. It's okay. But I'm going to create a target camera. And I'm going to bring the targets onto the the one so to be centered onto the one and this is just an example as you know and i'm also going to click on this little black um, black square over here and then when i do it i'm actually seeing what the camera is uh, looking at so if i move now if i move come on okay see if i move uh, my my view over here i'm also um, moving the camera Okay, so let's animate this camera and we can animate the camera right from here if we have this checked, if we have this uh, square, little square-like icon turned to white, we can actually move around and animate the camera right away. 
So um, we're going to into our first frame and uh, also we can adjust the target so we can tighten this thing up together. Okay, like so. In, on, in our first frame, I'm just going to uh, hit the record button. Now, one small tip. Because I'm just animating the camera, I don't have any of these switches turned on. I only have the movement. This will allow me to then later on edit the, um, how is it called, the graphic uh, curves a little bit better and a little bit in a more easier way just because it doesn't record keyframes on the rotation and on the scale and anything else. So it just makes my work a lot lighter and uh, just eases up things. So if you're going to animate the position, then you should only have this uh, small icon turned on. Uh, you can have the others, it's okay, but it just makes it easier if you have this one and I'll show you in a minute why. Okay, so here we are on our first frame and I'm going to maybe look for a movement like this, something like that. So I'm going to hit a keyframe on our first frame and on our 60th frame, on our frame 60, I'm going to move it a bit like so, for example, okay. And then we have something going on. We have this uh, soft movement, easy, easy to move in, of movement. Wow, easy to movement, easy out and easy in. Not sure if you know what I'm talking about, but I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but as you can see from here now, it looks pretty okay. Our one object is centered pretty much. But when I come into my last frame of this shot, it's not that centered and maybe I want to adjust that. And this is because I'm using a target camera and therefore I must animate the camera, the camera's target as well. So let's say our target is um, on our first frame is here. So let's add a keyframe over there and let's go into our frame 60. And then I can just, just a little bit our camera target and add another keyframe. Okay, there you go. It's looking good. Now, what I want to do is to add another camera. But before that, let me just change this name to camera one so that we can keep things organized. And let's create another target camera. So come over here, target camera, and we have another camera. Let's just rename that right away to camera two. And let's take a look at what cameras, camera two is actually looking at and uh, we can adjust the camera target 2, which is a target related to the camera 2, like so. And then we can actually just move it around a little bit, like so. You can use these icons if you don't know what I'm actually doing in my uh, hotkeys, which is, by the way, pressing Alt and then clicking on the object and uh, moving around. But in any way, in any case, uh, we're gonna, I don't know, maybe something like this. Let's add another keyframe and let's go into our frame 120 and move it a bit like so and add another keyframe. And this time I don't think I actually need to animate this target. I think it looks okay. And now let's add another camera. So let's go into target camera. Let's rename this to camera three. And uh, check that to make sure that we are actually what, uh, looking at what the camera three is aiming at. And let's go into our uh, frame 120. And um, let's set the camera. So this time I want the target to be focused on the three object on the third object or whatever you want to call it and therefore let's just move this around like so and I want to make I'm not sure but maybe something from here uh, let's move this a bit like so from here into there and maybe just scroll out a bit okay like so Great. And if we need, we can still 
adjust a little bit the target, just moving it around like so a bit. And uh, oh my God, I actually accidentally added keyframes to our target and that's not what we want, but no problem. Let's go again into our camera three, take another look at it like so. Make sure you have, by the way, this is this was an accident, but uh, it turns out that it's a useful accident just to make sure to tell you that you should have your camera selected while adding keyframes. So here we are, let's just zoom in a bit. Here we are on our frame 120 and we're adding a keyframe to our camera. And let's move on into our last frame and just move out a bit and maybe like so this will be more than enough maybe yeah that's that's good and add another keyframe so now we have one animated camera which has the, the target animated as well um, but in any case we have another camera animated let's go from the start so we have the camera one from zero to 60 and if you want to see what the camera one is actually looking at, we can click on this little icon here once again. So here we are, here we have, oh, I'm so rusty today. Here we have our first camera. Then from the frame 60 to, our, to the frame 120, we have our second camera. And our third camera should be from the frame 120 to the 180. Okay, I will just adjust a little bit this final uh, target, this target, animate the target over here so that it looks a little bit better. Okay. Now, one thing that we can do to improve this is to animate or to edit the curves. And this I really recommend you to do uh, almost every time you animate anything is that you right click on your object. Let's go into our first camera first. So right click onto your object and show tracks, no, show curves, yeah, show curves. And this represents, and I talked about this all the time, but in any case, I'll just explain, briefly explain what this is. This shows the velocity or the speed that uh, it takes. Um, so from one point to another. So here we see that the movement is really slow and as the line, starts to increase uh, the angle. So as it starts go, to go down or up, it means that it's going faster. And it, at the moment that it starts to just um, level at uh, like, like this curve over here, it starts to slow down. So what we want on, on our first frame or on our first shot is that um, in this case, I would like the camera to uh, begin still and start to move slowly until here and I don't want it to stop so I don't want that effect that the the camera is stopping slowly stopping no I just want a rough cut right there like if it was um, if it still continued to move but I just cut it there right um, okay, not that important for this tutorial, but I just like to share stuff with you. Another thing, so show tracks, let's edit our camera two over here. And it's not the tracks that we want to edit, it's the curves. So we can come over here and show F curves, or we can just on our timeline over here, click on this little icon and then select the position. Okay, same thing over here. And this time I don't want it to uh, slow down or speed up or anything. I just want it to go straight. So um, I want the speed to be consistent. And therefore I'm gonna select all the frames and the frames are these little things over here, these keyframes. I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna click over here where it says linear. So I'm gonna hit linear and then our movement will be linear. It won't start, it won't stop, it won't slow down, it's, it will just be linear. And on our third camera, let's do the same thing, show F curves. Um, I want it to slow down, but I want it to start like if it was already moving. So what I'm going to do is a little bit this. And yes, I'm editing, 
I just can can pick this little guy over here. Okay, I'm editing three lines, and each of them represent uh, one axis. So the position of each axis. And yes, in the end, I wanted to slow down. And this is because um, this um, tweaks that we just made is because I want the animation to start moving, right? To start. Um, the cameras that they they are stopped they, they start moving and in the end they stop again so that's why our second camera was really straight okay small things but you know small things make the difference and i thought you would like to uh, know that but in any case now we're um about to make um what we're here for right so let's select all of the cameras and alt g so we can group them and call them cam or cam or cameras or whatever you like. You don't need to do it. I just do it because it makes everything look better, and it helps me keep organized. Uh, okay. So next, what we need to do, and this is the trick. This is the actual trick, uh, and it's so simple. You're gonna love it. Uh, we, we're gonna come over here uh, to the floor menu, and we're gonna uh, look for the stage. And when you add the stage, you add this little object over here. We can bring it inside the group. It doesn't really matter what it is, but you know, for the sake of simplicity, we'll, we're going to keep it there. And inside the stage, uh, in the object tab, you have this camera, sky, foreground, background, and environment. Uh, we're only going to use the camera, but the same principles apply to every single uh, one of these um, uh, one of these, uh, how do you call this? One of these things, all right? So camera, sky, foreground, and whatever. So you can animate the sky, like if you want to have one sky in one shot and then another sky in another shot or another background, uh, you can do it the same way that we're gonna make, uh, that we're gonna deal with the camera. So we know that in our first frame, we want our first camera. So let's drag and drop our camera one onto this slot over here, right? And now it knows that our first camera is the camera one, but it doesn't really know what's our second camera. Uh, so all we need to do is to animate this parameter over here. Now, because I'm working with R16, I can only, I, I can click here only, and I already have a keyframe. But if you're using uh, R15 or something, before that, you will need to control click or command click on the little uh, sphere on the little circle over here to add a keyframe. In any case, let's add a keyframe. So I know that here is our camera one and on our frame uh, 60, right? I want to change the camera and it's as simple as to bring our camera two over here and then make sure to add a keyframe. And voila, we have camera one and camera two. Let's make the same thing over here on our third camera. So on the frame 120, we're going to drag the camera three to the camera slot and make sure to click the keyframe. And there you go. We have camera one, camera two and camera three. Really cool, huh? So I guess that's it, if you enjoyed this video make sure to click that like button, share it, subscribe, keep those comments flowing and all that good stuff. My name is Gustavo Maia for MyMotionGraphics.tv, I'll see you in another video, until then, bye bye.